All right, welcome back to uh, another video covering uh, mathematical literacy. Today we're going to be looking at models, uh, an introduction to models. So let's just jump straight in. Firstly, why do we use them? Well, models are usually used to display or demonstrate how a three-dimensional object would appear in real life. Okay, uh, sometimes you'll be given a 3D view of the model. Uh, it could be a set of stairs or a swimming pool or something like that that you're looking at from an isometric or a bleak view. Right? Sometimes they give you a 2D view like the floor plan of a house and they give you some other information such as the height of the walls and you have to calculate the surface area etc of them. So as a, as a result we usually use them when working out the materials needed to construct or cover the modeled objects. Uh, when I say construct uh, the stairs for example you would have to find how much concrete is needed to cast the stairs so that looks at the volume whereas if you're building a box or something you're looking at the surface area of it. So we jump into these the required tools. So there are a few main tools that we make use of when dealing with models. The first thing is scale. You're going to give, be given a plan or a map or a drawing or something that you're going to have to use. It's not going to be perfectly to scale um, in time, at times. Otherwise, they will give you a scale drawing of it and you'll have to scale it up or scale it down. We've covered scale in other uh, parts. Then you're going to be looking at the total surface area and the volume. We're going to focus on the total surface area and volume in the rest of this video. So, starting off with the total surface area. Well, total surface area is the area of each face of a three-dimensional shape added together. So, if we look at a rectangular prism here, all right, and we look at the number of faces, you'll see that I've got my 3D model of it, and then what's called a net, which is basically just all the panels that are needed put together. And if you cut that out and stuck it together with sticky tape, you'd be able to make that box. This prism has six faces. But because there are opposite pairs that are exactly identical, we can double up some things. So we only have to look at two times the area of each of the three faces, and that gives us our six. Okay. Other shapes that we usually encounter, all right, is a triangular prism. Now, if we look at the triangular prism and the net, you'll notice that in this respect, we've got the uh, five faces cut up here. Okay, so for that there are five faces but two of them are triangles and one is a big rectangle. If you look at A, B and C that could all be one length and H is another length. So that's why we use that formula for our total surface area there. Two times the area of the bases, the little triangles there. You have to have the perpendicular heights here. That's a very important piece of information. If that's missing you'll need to use Pythagoras to fill that in. But it's giving us the right amount of information. And then the third shape we look at usually is a cylinder. Cylinders, it's two circles with a big strip wrapped around it. Because of that, there are only three faces, the two circular faces and a rectangle wrapped around it. So we can do two pi r squared, which is two times the area of the bases, plus the circumference of the base, two pi r, times the height, so that we can get the length of that. Because if you look at, the, say, the gray shaded in part there, if you rolled that along the length of that strip, that, that rectangle, it would do a full revolution. So it's the full circumference of that that's counted there. Okay. Now, we want to look at the, uh, the context here. Normally it's not just simply a cylinder or uh, a rectangular prism or something. If you're looking at some packaging questions, yes, it would be those simple shapes, but often we look at other ways to deal with it if they're complex shapes. So the easiest way to do this is either you calculate the area of each surface and add them together, or you use a general formula. Total surface area is two times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. Okay, we'll look at applying that second one in some other examples later in uh, other videos, but, and you could also look at the four videos that I made on specific complex shapes where I make use of that formula. Okay, that is derived from the 
formula that we use for the circle or the cylindrical uh, object. Okay, and then just to say that both of these can e can work equally well. All right, it depends on the specific scenarios that you're using where you would use each of these. Okay, if you're given a formula to use in an exam, you should usually just follow that that suggested formula anyway. Okay, right, moving on to the volume. Volume is the amount of space a three-dimensional object occupies, not to be confused with capacity, which is how much a three-dimensional object can hold. Okay, so as a result, we calculate them in the same way, but capacity uses specialized units often. Okay, the units for volume and for capacity is cubic millimeters, cubic centimeters, cubic meters, and cubic kilometers. Cubic kilometers is a bit of an extreme one, but... It does come up once in a while, but capacity also uses milliliters, liters, and kiloliters. All right, and just so that we can cover this, the milliliter is one cubic centimeter. A thousand cubic centimeters makes up a liter, like a thousand milliliters would, and one cubic meter is one kiloliter. All right, these are important for you to know. Often they're given to you, but just to speed up uh, any calculations that you're doing, you should know these, especially the thousand cubic centimeters makes a liter and one cubic meter makes a kiloliter. It does make your life a bit easier if you know them off the bat. All right, so when calculating the volume, we have two main approaches. We can use the four major shapes individually or in combination. So what do I mean by the four major shapes? Well, we have a cube, which we know the volume is just the sides cubed, right? Side times side times side, or area of the base, side squared times side. You've got your rectangular prism, which is length times breadth times height. You've got your cylinder, which is going to be your area of your base, so pi r squared times height. And our triangular prism, which is just the area of the base times the height. So half base times height times height again, which is the shaded in parts. Okay. Very important, quickly, about the cylinder. If they give you a specific value for pi, like 3,142, use the specific value of pi that they've given you. Don't go use the one on your, on your calculator, especially in mathematical literacy. Okay. There is a general formula that we can use, which is the uh, volume is the area of the base times the height. That's used when we're working with some sort of complex shapes, and you can work out the area of the... Uh, the shape, if there's a hole in it, you can work out the area of the face with the hole in it, and then just multiply that by the height, and that will give you the volume as well. Okay, so that's just the basics of models. Obviously, we can't talk about them unless they're in some sort of context, so I'm going to do a couple of follow-up videos, which I'll put the links in, uh, in the description below, where you can follow. Uh, to look at specific questions and some exam type questions where models and that sort of thing is included. Okay, so stay safe.